Thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to do one of our first projects on our fiber laser. This is a 60 watt JPT MOPA laser and I've had a request for a golf ball marker that's magnetic. Looked at a lot of different options and really based on what they wanted to do for budget, I came up with trying to engrave a, uh, a one inch magnet. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. It looks like they're fairly easy to engrave. They engrave beautifully to white and uh, I can keep it within the customer's budget. So what I thought I'd do today, this is a real simple project, but more importantly, I just wanted to step you through the process of what a project looks like on a fiber laser. Maybe you don't have a fiber laser or you're considering one, but you just don't know kind of what it looks like compared to maybe a CO2 laser. And so that's what today is all about. I get a lot of people asking me just basic stuff about fiber lasers. And so this will kind of give you a basic workflow on, you know, what it looks like. One of the main reasons I bought a fiber laser was just to give me more options for customers at request for something that I can't do on my CO2 laser. This is a perfect example. I would not do this project in any way, shape or form if I didn't have a fiber laser for two reasons. Number one, it's gonna be a real pain to mark on these with a CO2 laser, where it's gonna be a breeze with the, uh, with the fiber laser. And just the mere setup, and you'll see how fast this will go when we get our design done and we're ready to go to the fiber laser and get these marked. Um, one be big benefit in my mind when it comes to fiber is uh, you get to see exactly where uh, your design is when you're lining this up and you're going to see how easy and quick it is uh, to get little things like this done where it would be fairly tedious to do in a CO2 laser. Even with the, even with the uh, a jig. Now if I had a whole bunch of these to do, I would certainly make a jig and use my fiber laser with a jig. But I've only got 25 of these to make so it's not like it's going to take a long time to uh, to generate them so I will probably just do these individually and I think that's what I'm going to set up. I'll probably use my foot pedal on the uh, fiber laser which means uh, you don't have to go back to the computer and and start it every time. All you've got to do is press your uh, foot pedal down and it'll uh, start the, the design again and it's really fast. So anyway let's jump into Lightburn. I'll show you this quick layout. I'll show you some uh, things that I really like about Lightburn Galvo. Um, it makes laying this stuff out a, a breeze. It's really easy to do. And then we'll jump over here to the fiber, show you my setup here, and uh, we'll get one made. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, to get started, the first thing that's a little different compared to uh, CO2 lasers, I'm going to come down here. I've got a 110 lens installed in my fiber, so I want to make sure that I've got the 110 profile selected, which uh, when you select your profile, that establishes the size of your workspace, which is just over four inches by four inches. That's going to be fine for what we're doing today. So you determine your work size based on your profile, but that's really the only difference between running a CO2 and a fiber is you will just have a different uh, machine profile or device profile for each individual lens. So we're going to make sure that we're in the 110 and that gives us our 4.3 by 4.3 workspace. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to come to my art library. I'm going to drag out my one inch uh, magnet outline. And um, the nice thing about that is if I hit the letter P, it will automatically center it. So if I select it and hit the letter P, it go ahead and puts it right dead in the middle of that workspace. And if you do that with your other designs, you know that everything's lined up. So uh, letter P uh, will center it. You can also, if you prefer, you can turn on your uh, cursor, your center line cursor. You notice that I have my cursor, uh, uh, my mouse cursor in a crosshair. Um, both of these are turned on right here. Um, this is the work area uh, center cross. We'll turn on this one here. If you don't like working that way, you can turn that off. Um, so we can turn that off. And I've got the right here is show full screen line cursor. 
that is my mouse line cursor. I really like it when I'm designing to have this on. So basically I've centered my uh, perimeter and this is just going to be a, uh, a resource for me. What I'm going to do when I get ready to go to the fiber laser, I'm going to turn this on in a line command and I'm going to frame it and it will show me the outside uh, profile of that magnet. And that's how we're going to go ahead and get things set up. So we'll do that here in just a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is um, this is a graphic that the customer provided. And the only thing I really want is just this flag and the, the, the uh, hole. Um, this Nevada is a little bit out of skew. Um, and so I'm going to, I've already got a real good um, vector for, for a Nevada. So I'm not going to use this outline, but I do want this uh, flag layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to come up here to trace image. I'm going to zoom in because the only thing I care about is just the flag and the whole area. So we're going to adjust our cutoffs just to where it's as clean as it can be. I'll come in here. I don't care about this oval right here. I can recreate that real easy. It'll be easier to do if I don't. So what we'll do is if I just have a little bit of an outline, we'll see. And that looks pretty good right there. The other thing I can do is fade image. And that really helps to be able to see what's going on here. You can see that I've got a double line there. Don't necessarily need that. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and move that so I don't have I'm going to have that. That looks good. I'll recreate with this with just an oval, and then I'll go ahead and get rid of these nodes and clean this up, and then this outline will look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Then I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to go ahead and move this up in case I need it later. Go ahead and color it what I want and now I'm going to ungroup it because I want to get rid of the outline of the Nevada. First thing I'm going to do is recreate this oval so I'm going to come over here to my circle tool and I'm going to draw me an oval. Yeah, looks about right. So I'm going to get rid of all these. Put this back. And we're going to come up here and we got to fix this. I'm going to go to my node editing tool. Let's select it. And I'm going to just select this node and hit the D key. Not the delete key, but the D key. And get rid of that node. I'm going to go ahead and detach this from here. That from there. And now the, the, uh, this is all separated. So what I'm going to do is come up here to this. I'm going to select my Nevada outline, get rid of it, zoom in. I'm going to go to my pencil tool. I'm going to snap there, snap there, and then I want to make sure that they're all joined. So I'm going to go back to my select tool, select this, hold the shift key down, select that, go to edit, um, auto join shapes, and now that should all be joined. And it is. I do see we got a problem here. We'll come up here, we'll go back into our node editing. And we don't need it, so we're going to just select that node, hit the D key. Hit this node, hit the D key, and now that's all cleaned up. And now I can go ahead and, you notice, this is <coughs> a great example. When you uh, trace something, uh, it's a little bit rough. And if you want to, you can use the Select Options Optimize Shapes tool. Now, sometimes this works really well, other times it doesn't. But if I go to Smooth Shapes and just start to reduce the number of nodes, you can see how clean that is already. Um, let's look at the, let's look at the, so we went, for, um, <coughs> see if we can take a look at the rest of this, make sure it didn't mess up our design. Looks like it did, it did a great job. And so now what we can do is we can come in here Select this, hit the D key, or excuse me, the delete key, 
get rid of some of these artifacts right quick. All right, now I've got my flag design and I can take this design and I just put it in the middle of the uh, Nevada that I already had, put in the text and we've got our design. So you can see that knowing a little bit about node editing uh, and using your trace tool on something that a customer gives you, uh, it won't take long for you to get it designed. So at this point, we've got our design done. Of course, we'll, we, we've already gotten approval from the, uh, from the customer on this particular layout. And so at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and go to the fiber laser and get it set up so I can um, engrave this design on that magnet. So in order to get the magnet lined up, I'm going to select this. I'm going to turn this on. And we're going to go ahead and preview the magnet outline first. And then so if we hit frame, what will happen is that will superimpose the circle down on my workspace. I'll lay my magnet down and with the XY table that you'll see in this next shot, uh, I'll drive the, uh, the, the uh, magnet into place. And then once we have that done, I'll turn off the magnet outline, turn on the engrave, and that will show on the uh, magnet. And if everything lines up like we think it should, all I have to do is when I hit frame, I can hit start and I can go ahead and start to engrave these magnets. Okay, so I've got the uh, the magnet outline frame. Now it looks like it's circle, but it's actually solid. So the video is showing it just a little bit differently than it actually is. This is what they call an XY table. This is just an additional piece that I purchased. So I have the ability to do micro adjustments with this and this to get it exactly where I need it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this magnet, I'm gonna push it up in that V, and then I'm gonna just use these knobs to steer it into place. And for things like this, this XY table um, really makes it easy. And you can tell based on by the reflections on kind of where you need to be. So now I've got the uh, magnet set up where it needs to be. This is, will be re very repeatable. This uh, XY table is screwed to the base of the uh, fiber laser. And uh, so now each time I want to make another one, I can just slide it up against the, the V and I'll be ready to go. You can see now that we've got the actual outline uh, superimposed on the magnet. So I can make sure that what I see is what I want. And that's going to look great. And at this point, we should be able to pull the trigger on the design and see how it looks. So what I will do, I've got to put on the old glasses, make sure my glasses are on, and let's give it a try. I'm going to just go ahead and say, start. That's one pass. That's two passes. It gives me a little indication that it's over with. They wanted it in a nice light white color. And there it is. Very subtle, but a nice design. And it only took a few seconds. So if we wanted to do multiple numbers of these, all we would have to do is take our magnet, place it in our V, Hit the foot pedal. It's going to mark it for us. It's going to go through two passes. That's the first pass. Go in the second pass, two different directions. And this took about 17 seconds. And you just feed them in. Well, as you can see, Creating something like this doesn't take very much time and it's a lot of fun. It gives you a lot more options than you had before. So now I'll be able to crank these out for my customer that I would have had to turn away if I hadn't had the fiber laser. Remember the fiber laser, CO2 laser, anything like this is strictly a tool in your shop 
to be able to provide options for your customers or options for you to do a better, faster, quicker job. And that's what it's all about. I hope you guys enjoy the content. If, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel. And it's because of those contributions is the reason why I have the ability to create this content. Really appreciate all the support. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.